Hi, and welcome to a quick, quick, quick sort of study of my little big flower. This is a project that actually started back in August based on a customer who wanted to learn how to rug hook but also had to punch needle. This can be replicated with punch needle using wool, yarn, or synthetics, whatever you prefer. I prefer to use wool strips. I prefer rug hooking. So that's why I'm demonstrating on that. The first thing I wanna show you, cause this is always a subject that comes up, is tension. I don't know if you can see. Sometimes you're gonna find yourself with little gaps. Those are called holidays, but these gaps might be necessary. So they're not always bad gaps. When you have really excessive gaps like this, then I have to go back and look at the other side and try to figure out what my thought process was. Well, I can tell you right now, because I'm not finished, that I knew that I was gonna go back in maybe with a slightly different color to accent that line. Because the thing about rug hooking and with punch needle and anything else is that it's about making things feel three-dimensional. Now, with my clouds, I went ahead and did prodding. And prodding is simply still a form of rug hooking, but it allows me to take thick cuts of fabric and create poofy, puffy fluffs. Um, on here, you can see, sometimes the back side's actually prettier than the front side. But um, in this case, to me, it just, just tells me that I have a nice, relaxed gauge. That little bit of space in between reminds me that I am actually skipping little columns here and there. Because if you study your cloth, whether it be monks, linen, or uh, burlap, um, you'll notice that you do have these little columns in here. And they naturally shift themselves over. When you when you go in and push your, bring your uh, fabric through, you'll notice that this column here will start to squish itself down, which makes it the next natural place to pull up will be the column right after. So it's not like you have to force this. If you feel like you're forcing your fabric, it means that you really are trying to go side by side by side by side, and you don't need to do that. So the next thing we're gonna do I happen to have a fancier um, frame. Um, I do love the ones that we're working on that we're building, the ones that we sell. So I'm gonna lay this out because I know that I'm working on this grassy area. I have to cut more fabric for my sky. I like to be experimental. I would love to tell you that I used exactly four folds and it was uh, three this way and 25 that way, but I sometimes when you're just being creative, you don't need to do that. You can just free play. And I always make sure that whatever I'm using, I can replicate in case somebody wants that colorway. So the other subject that we had was I did dye in the sky. So as you can see, just those little bits of light nuances can, can actually represent distant clouds. But because my focus is on the flower, my sky becomes the background. And the only thing I made poofy was the cloud here. And I did that on purpose to mimic what I did in my applique version. Um, when you come down to it, you can see also that I'm not following a straight line. Here I am following a straight line. I'm giving it movement. But I get bored, and I'm also aware of the fact that there is no such thing as a perfect landscape. So by turning my fabric and letting it follow a line, um, it allows me to free up or break up that monotony. And also by using different colors, I'll go back in and I'll fill in this space here. And the nice thing is, is that I'm not limiting myself to one size cut. So I may have a size eight here, but I actually have a size six right next to it. Um, and that's what gives texture as well. There are some old school ways of doing things, but I don't follow the rules. So I did the same thing with my sky. I let it flow this way, but I let it kind of move around the flower. And what it does is it's almost like imagining if there was wind and the wind is coming over and it's bending itself around. And the easiest way that you can help yourself to learn how to do things like this if it's not natural is to take your Sharpie and draw your lines and make your lines happen. So see here I didn't stay within my lines. I actually, my flower finished before I got to this outside line here. And I let it happen that way because it was symmetrical. It felt more natural. And instead of having these pieces come straight down, I went ahead and drew myself one line and I've been following that line ever since. And I knew that this is where my grass was gonna end and this is where my sky is gonna end. So I will fill them in with separate colors. 
So this subject today really is just to show you how to look at your rug. When you get this far, it can become daunting because you want to just get finished and it feels like you're never going to get to the end. That's how I feel about the sky. But if you're willing to experiment, you can walk away from that and come back down here and continue to work on your background. And note that I started in the center like I told you I would and I built myself my, my design outward I don't know if that was the correct word for my English phrasing there, but I built it outward. And by doing that, when I get to my edges, I'll have a nicer, cleaner line versus me trying to start from the outside and work my way in. So you always find your most obvious center point, And even if it's a little off kilter, you're still going to start somewhere in this zone right here on this pattern.